Welcome to the finale of our series called You Are Made for This. We're looking at uh, really our core uh, vision, what we're all about here at Valley Christian Church. Today, because we did a special Father's Day message last week uh, for the dads, we're actually combining uh, the last two of our core four. Let's look at them really quick. Why we exist uh, as a church, why Valley exists, is to help people know God find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. That's our core four. That, that, everything we do is filtered through those four things, helping people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and to make a difference. I want to invite you back next week as we start a brand new series that we're going to be th- in through the whole summer that's called Walking Away from Jesus. You know, everyone who encountered Jesus, they, they, they walked away different, either for bad or for good. Some were upset, some were healed, uh, you, you know, some were uh, uh, in, inspired, uh, some were angry, but everyone who walked away, Jesus, walked away from Jesus walked away different, and that's going to kick off uh, next week, and I invite you back for that. Uh, that's going to be our summer series. But, but again, we filter everything we do here at Valley Christian Church through these four things, and, and that's why it's important from time to time to just take some you know, focus and, and, and really dig deep, uh, drill down deep into why these are so important. And starting off today, as we talk about discovering purpose and making a difference, I want to look at a verse uh, in, in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, a couple things in here I think that are really important. Those who have been called according to his purpose. Calling and purpose, uh, as we're talking about discovering purpose, making a difference, calling and purpose always seem to go together in in the scripture, in, in the Bible. But what do you think of most of the time when you hear the word called? You know, someone called you or a calling, you know, someone's calling. It always seems like an interruption, But the reality is, in my life and in your life, God's calling is not an interruption. It's actually a a moment of, could I put it this way, like unveiling. It's a moment of destiny. It's not a distraction. And so this word calling is pretty interesting. Again, goes so many times with the word purpose. The word purpose in the New Testament only shows up, I think, four or five times in all the New Testament but the word calling shows up over a hundred times in the New Testament. It's the Greek word kaleo. It means you've been called. Those have been called according to his purpose, kaleo. Uh, and, and it means God's purpose, his assignment. It means your reason for life. You were created for a specific reason. That's the calling that God has on your life. That's what you've been called to. Your calling is far more significant than your career it's more significant than your job. God has a unique calling for each and every one of us. And and when you think about it, the Bible really is a story uh, about people answering God's call. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Samuel, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, the disciples, you know, Paul. And, And when you think about all of them, uh, it's interesting, none of them before they were called by God were, were like priests or clergy. They, they were all in the marketplace. They all were uh, entrepreneurs. They all had businesses. They, they all worked in some other area, and then they were called by God. H- how are we going to fulfill our calling? Well, I want to share with you four things that you need to know about your calling. And remember, calling and purpose are, are so, so much synonyms. At Valley Christian Church here, the, the way that we really help people, because this is a big part, helping people discover their purpose, discover their calling, uh, that, that, that primarily happens in growth track that we have here. Uh, three Sundays out of every month at nine o'clock where, where you can discover the unique design that God has created you, your personality type, uh, and, and really where that plugs into the big picture of all that God is doing. And so if you haven't taken growth track, I highly recommend it. It's not something that we want from you. It's something we want for you to help you discover your calling. And when you discover your call, the purpose why you're on this planet You know what? There's nothing like that fulfillment that comes into your life. So four things that you need to know about your calling. Here's the first one. Your calling is a gift from God. 
your calling is really God's gift to you. You, you don't earn it. You, you can't deserve it. It's graciously given to you by God. It's a present. It's a, it's a gift that he gives to you. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 puts it this way. God, by his grace through Christ, has called you to become his people. By his grace. We, we don't earn it. Uh, and we talked about this last week, the difference between mercy and grace. Uh, grace is that we get what we don't deserve. That's a good definition of grace. We get what we don't deserve. That's God's grace. We get this calling, not because we've earned it, not because we're better than someone else. It's a gift that God gives to you and to me. And and it's really, I've heard the definition of grace this way, it's undeserved kindness. There's no reason for God to be kind to you, God to be kind to me. But by grace, he's kind to us. He gives us this calling. Your calling is part of salvation. It is part of when we receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, recognizing that he lived a sinless life. He laid that life down as a sacrifice and a substitute for you and for me and and paid the price for my personal sin, your personal sin on the cross and rose again. That's how we know for sure it was paid in full. That that when, when we repent of our sins and receive Christ, his sinless life, his sacrificial death, and his resurrection from the dead. We apply that to our life through what he did completely. Then at that moment, then there's a sense of our calling, our destiny opens up before us. And so the first thing is your calling is a gift from God. Here's the second one. You're called for God's purpose. You're called for God's purpose, not for your own. God didn't make you for you. He didn't make you for your mom and dad. He didn't make you, create you for someone else. God made you for himself, and it's his plan and purpose when we discover his plan and purpose for our life that we find ultimate fulfillment. Uh, Let me put it this way. A A career makes a living, but a calling makes a life. A career makes a living, but a calling makes a life that you know i've been a a pastor here at valley over 30 years there's gonna be a time it's not anytime soon you you know but but there'll be a time when i'll step away from being a pastor it won't change the calling on my life It, it won't change the purpose that god has put me on this planet for it's not about a job it's not about a career it's a unique purpose really what 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 the purpose is god put me on this planet for I remember in the 90s working through some, some, reading through some material and coming up with a life purpose statement. The reason I'm on this planet, Greg Williamson, I'm just kind of wondering, is to, to create growth environment for other people to discover their purpose. That, that's, that's why I'm alive. To create environments where people can discover their God-given purpose and fulfill that. I, I've done a lot of things in terms of work, in terms of job, uh, You know, I painted houses. That was my first job as a teenager. Uh, I scooped ice cream. I was a janitor at a a school, a Christian school in town when I was in Bible college. Uh, Did all the the mopping and taking the garbage out and all those things that janitors do. I worked for IBM uh, for a summer, saved up enough money to buy an engagement ring for my beautiful fiance, now wife, uh, Susie. And uh, I also coached high school football and and I passed her. So I've done all kinds of things, but, but as I look back in my life, every single time, even painting houses, all that, so the conversations we'd have when I'm scooping ice cream with coworkers is just kind of crazy. Conversation after conversation, helping people, and I didn't even know it at the time, but, but it was just like it would come out of me when relationships and all, just helping people discover their God-given purpose. Just creating an environment to help. Other. When I was coaching, that's why I tried try to give those young men a bigger picture of not just football, but of life, what life's all about, coaching them up. And and so your calling is different than a career. A career makes a living. A calling makes a life. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 puts it this way, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That word workmanship, again, in the Bible, uh, biblical Greek, 
Uh, that, that word workmanship is the Greek word poema, and it means a masterpiece. In other words, God doesn't make junk. God doesn't make junk. You may feel like you're junky, but, but, but you, you know, your value may be low, your self-image, self-esteem. That's not, God doesn't do that. He created you on purpose for a purpose. And so you're God's workman, you're God's masterpiece. You were put here on this planet to be a contributor, not just a consumer. Those are the good works. He's created for you good works in advance for you to do. Think, think about that for just a minute. Before you drew your first breath, before you, you even got knit you together in your mother's womb, he had a purpose for you. Good works, good things that you would do that you would bring to this planet, that you would do in your lifetime, this moment that you're alive in. He planned and purposed it before he even created the heavens and the earth. It's pretty powerful when you get a hold of that. Prepared in advance. So your calling is a gift from God. You're called for God's purpose. Here's the third thing. God chose you. God chose your calling before you were born kind of touched on that just a second ago. God chose your calling before you were even born. Let's look at just a few passages. There's so many in the Bible. Let's just look at a few of them. Galatians chapter 1 verse 15 says, it pleased God in his kindness to choose me and call me even before I was born. What undeserved mercy. Paul there is talking about himself, but it applies to all of us really, that God chose us even before we were born. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 puts it this way, before I shaped you in the womb, God's talking here, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, had holy plans for you. Holy, what does that mean? That doesn't mean necessarily to be a pastor, may, may not. Holy means, what does it mean? Not, not, not a pastor, priest, not, doesn't mean that. What does it mean? Plans set apart, that, that God had a purpose he knew all about before he saw the light, holy plans. That means plans that he had for you to accomplish. A specific plans, a set of specific plans that he had for you to accomplish. A set of specific plans that he had for me to accomplish. Not the same plans, unique plans. And so holy plans, even before we drew our first breath, even before we saw the light of day, how about this one, Isaiah 44, verse 2. It says, I am your creator, God is speaking. You were in my care even before you were born. Even before, your, God cares even before you were born. What, what are these three passages really together teach us? Well, first of all, you're created. You're not an accident. You're not an accident. He says, I am your creator, if you think life's an accident, you're going to act like it. You're going you're gonna to live life dangerously. You're, you're not going to value your life. You're not going to value other people's lives if you feel like you're an accident. But, but God makes it clear, you were created. Second thing he says is, uh, you're deeply loved. You were in my care. You were in my care. E even while you were growing inside of your mother's womb, God was looking out for you. As I've said before in the past, there's, there's no such thing as accidental children. There are accidental parents, <laughs> but, but there is no such thing as accidental children. God is the giver of life, and that's why human life must be valued in the womb to the tomb. The Bible clearly teaches that God has a plan and a purpose for a child in the womb at that moment of conception all the way through to the time of death. That's the clear teachings of Scripture over and over and over. So many more Scriptures than we even looked at here. God planned your life before you were born. And we ultimately find fulfillment when we follow that plan, when we discover that purpose, that calling that He has on your life and mine. Here's the fourth thing that's really important that we remember in terms of fulfilling our calling that we need to know about our calling. Your sins and mistakes don't change your call. Let me just say that again. Somebody really needs to hear that. Your sins and your mistakes don't change your calling. It doesn't matter how much you've messed up in your life so far. I mean, think about it. Paul, the apostle, he was a, he was a terrorist, 
He was a religious, fanatical terrorist. He was a murderer, but God had a call on his life. And, and, and when he understood that calling, when, when Jesus revealed himself to him, it changed his life, changed the direction of his life. That God didn't say, no, because you persecuted the church, but because you actually oversaw, <laughs> you were overseer to, to seeing Christians murdered, no, you, you're, that calling's no good anymore. Doesn't happen that way. Your sins and mistakes don't change your call. Doesn't matter how bad you've messed up. Look at 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 12 through 13. Paul here is writing to a young pastor by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, by calling me into his service, Jesus has judged me trustworthy. Even though I used to be a blasphemer and a persecutor and, and contemptuous, mercy, however, was shown to me because while I lacked faith, I acted in ignorance. So much of what you and I do is ignorance. And, and sometimes it's deliberate, sometimes it's intentional, we know what we're doing, but, but sometimes we, we sin, we do things, we make a mess of our life, and it's, and it's in ignorance. None of those things, whether it's deliberate, intentional, or in ignorance, none of those things really cause us to, to forfeit our calling. Every one of us has done a bunch of dumb stuff. I, I mean, a, a truckload of stupid, every one of us has. But, but God has no plan B. It, there's a scripture in the New Testament that puts it this way, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. That, that means you don't forfeit it. You don't, it. The call is still there. God doesn't waste what happens. This is important to remember. Not even our sin. Part of my calling oftentimes, part of your calling oftentimes comes out of our pain. That God even uses the painful stuff in life, the, the difficulties, you, you know, the, the, the scars. As we talked about, I think it was last summer, when I was talking about walking wounded. You, you know, wounds don't mean you're weak. Wounds mean you're a warrior. Wounds mean you've been through something. Isn't it interesting, when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he still had scars still had scars. God, God gave him a completely glorified body, but it still had the scars. God didn't erase those scars from Jesus. You know, wounds don't mean you're weak. It means you're a warrior. It means, means you've been through some stuff. It means you overcome. God doesn't waste any of it. And so, big part of what we do here, again, growth track, helping people discover their purpose, discover their calling, and I, I, I really encourage you, if you haven't been through that, to go through it. Maybe you're, you're coming back. Uh, I met a, met a woman last week, the first time back in church, six years. You, you know, uh, maybe you're coming back. Maybe it'd be a good idea to go through growth track one more time. Just, just to refresh. Why am I here? What's my purpose on this planet? Discovering Purpose. And then our, our, our fourth core statement really is making a difference. And, and it's easy to connect these two together because they're, they're so closely combined. Discovering purpose and making a difference. So let me give you now two keys to making a difference that are really important. Again, connected to, hitched together with calling and purpose. First one is this, your calling is connected to others. Your call, my calling is connected to others. Your calling is connected to others. You can't fulfill God's plan and purpose in your life by yourself. It's impossible. You can't do it, not in isolation. Calling and community always go together, always. You know, think about the, the body of Christ. There's, there's any part of your body, if you cut it off, it dies. Any part of it. It, it completely was not the rest of it, but whatever. If I cut my finger off, that it shrivels up, it dies. And and through Scripture in the New Testament, that that God actually speaks through Paul and talks about that we're the body of Christ. That that means community. We're supposed to be in community relationship that's growing with one another. That's how I fulfill my call, and that's how you fulfill your calling, your purpose, uh, the purpose that God created you for. How do you get your calling connected? Through, through the church, through the local church, Christ's body. 
It's only through connection and community that you and I ever fulfill our calling. Look at what Hebrews uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says. Brothers and sisters, you are holy partners in a heavenly calling. Now, now I love that because it's not talking about just pastors. Brothers and sisters, everyone in the body of Christ, everyone in God's family, Everyone who has received Jesus Christ as their Savior, that has been adopted into God's family, as the Bible teaches. It it says, brothers and sisters, you are holy partners in a heavenly calling. We're we're better together when we partner together. Uh, You know, it's kind of like that acronym for TEAM. Together, everyone achieves more. T-E-A-M. Together, everyone achieves more. It's just like that in the body of Christ. We can make a deeper impact in our community. I'm a difference maker on my own. You're a difference maker on your own. But when we join together, we can be even more powerful and make a deeper impact when we partner together. That's why we value uh, those that, that partner with us here at Valley Christian Church, part of the Valley family. We call them dream teamers. If serve in any area in our church, they're dream teamers. That because it's amazing, long before, when you think about it, long, when someone first comes to our church, long before, uh, you, you know, uh, they hear the worship or, or even a message, uh, a sermon like this, long before, it, it's the people opening the door and smiling, good morning, it's great to see you. That so much makes up that first initial impact. You, you know, the the the, the the first view, first impression. And, and, and when that person comes the first time, maybe they don't know Jesus Christ and they sit through a service and, and it's a positive experience for them, the worship, the word, you know, people are talking to them, not ignoring them, they're not clickish going on, you know, just everybody talking to their friends but looking out for other people and then they, their heart opens and they receive Jesus Christ. That's a win for the whole team. For the whole team. In fact, I started doing this uh, several months back. Before we start off our services on Sunday, we have all our dream teamers that are there just to come in. And I just share with them a story, usually from the week before, of, of just someone who was impacted, usually a first time guest, but in a big way, just by, by coming, because they've experienced everybody partnered together. Again, you're called to be a contributor, not just a consumer. We partner together. We value our, our, our dream teamers here at, from, from, it seems like just pouring a cup of coffee, that's not insignificant. Leading worship, that's not insignificant. You know, uh, ministering to the kids, that's not insignificant. Not at all. I was a kid back there. Greg Williamson grew up in this church. We, we have pastors on staff that, that were literally from infant nursery all the way through. Pastors in, all across America serving in places that grew up were little kids that people saw the value in ministering to them right here in this church and now pastoring different places all over the country so your calling is connected to others and here's the second thing god empowers what he calls you to do god empowers what he calls you to do don't don't we want that don't you want that in your life i know i want that in my life i I want to do what god's called me to do so he gives he empowers me to do it instead of doing the hard stuff trying to do it on my own god gives grace that's his enabling presence also is another definition of grace he 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 gives us what we don't deserve and and what is it that's his enabling presence he empowers us to accomplish what it is that he's called us to do what God calls you to do, he equips and enables me to do with others. Let me put it this way. When I commit to my calling, God commits to give me strength and power to fulfill it. When I commit, when you commit to embrace your calling, God commits to give you the strength and the power to fulfill that calling. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 puts it this way. I urge you to live the life to which God's called you. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm urging you. I, I'm, I'm ho- hopefully inspiring you, encouraging you, maybe even challenging you. Live the life God called you to live. Just embrace the purpose that God has for you. If you don't know what it is, check it out in Growth Track. If you do know, time to get in the game. Step up. 
get on the field, embrace, live the life to which God has called you. And, and here, here's what we are praying for you. We as a team. Look at it, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It says, that is why we, notice it's plural, almost all the promises of God in the Bible are plural. They're not for individuals, it's in the group setting. Almost every single one, there's very few individually. That's why we always pray for you asking our God, you hear the plurality here? Asking the community, asking our God to help you live the kind of life he called you to live. We pray that with his power, God will help you to do good things you want uh, and to perform the works that come from your faith. That, that there's, there's always a sense of community throughout Scripture. We're supposed to be a family, a community together. And we're on mission, living out our calling together. You were made on purpose for a purpose, but that purpose and calling is discovered in community with other people. That's how you make a big difference. You can count on God to give you the strength that you need to fulfill the calling that he created you for. Let's go back now. Ephesians chapter 1, how we started this series off, and I just want to show you this in the message translation, how it relates to making a difference, fulfilling your calling, discovering your purpose, and making a difference. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 18 says, I ask God to make you intelligent and discerning in knowing Him personally. Know God so that you can see exactly what it is he is calling you to do and grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life he has for Christians. That's what God has for you, a glorious way of living on purpose for a purpose in community. Know God, find freedom, Discover purpose, your calling. Make a difference, fulfilling that calling. Now, I, I know that for some, for one reason or another, uh, m maybe serving on a Sunday is really difficult for you, uh, you, you know, for one reason or another. But, but we have a great event that, that is coming up in July that I want to share with you that's going to make a big, big difference. That's called Serve Day. Serve Day. And let me tell you a little bit about, we've been encouraging you to save the date. Let me tell you a little bit about Serve Day. It's not just Valley Christian Church. There's literally thousands of churches across America that, that on this day, July 16th, at this time, really between 9 and noon, are, are going to be just going out very intentionally, like unified, so that the nation sees the body of Christ out in the community helping. We, we do a lot of things in the community on a regular basis, but we're joining this, this nationwide movement, July 16th, and, and it's called Serve Day. And, and we have three opportunities where you can serve. Like I said, maybe for Sunday because of your work schedule or something like that, you, you can't be on a dream team. But this is an opportunity on a Saturday where, where you can really make a difference in our community and show the love of Jesus Christ and really spread hope to those in our community. Three different things that we're doing real local here. I mean, real like next door is one of them. Uh, we're have, gonna have some yard and landscaping work done at Unshattered Building right next door to, to our church property uh, right here. That, that's one of the things that you can sign up for. Maybe you're not too much into you know gardening, landscaping, anything like that. Well, we're also gonna have a grocery outreach. Uh, back in Valley Kids, we're gonna have grocery bags and, and packing them full of food for those that really need that in our community and then we're going to be bringing those bags of food to places like Hudson River Housing and some other organizations that distribute that food to those that need it so much in our community. You can be part of that assembly line or maybe you want to be one that drives it to one of the locations in our community. We've got that all set up, all arranged. All you need to do is to sign up for that. And then we have a great opportunity. I think I might just jump in on this uh, specific one. I, I like this idea. Uh, the town of East Fishkill 
we contacted them. We said, what can we do to help? And they said, you know what? We've got some painting that needs to be done at Red Wing Park. That's almost like across the street from our campus here in Hopewell. And, and so there's going to be a few of us that are going to go out there and, and all set up ahead of time and, and do some painting uh, of Red Wing Park there. What a great opportunity to just bless our community unshattered at Red Wing Park and also assembling food, packing food, and bringing it to those who need it the most. A cool thing is this. Every single person that comes is going to receive one of these cool red t-shirts. It's got the Valley logo on it. And uh, initially, we were going to call this Spread Hope Day, which is our big outreach ministry. So we had these made up, Spread Hope Day. But what it really is, uh, it is it is a day that, that really we're, we're serving our community. But every single person is going to get one of these so that we can get some team photos, actually, of us out there doing it. You know, during the, the shutdown, the pandemic, I mean, we served, I think it was 11,000 meals. Uh, 11,000 people in, in our community had food that otherwise it would have been a difficult time because of our spread hope ministry. And, and this is just a sample, just one day where we can do that. Uh, we do it on an ongoing basis through Flores Food Truck and uh, Flores Food Company. And we're so thrilled to partner. See, even then, there's power in partnership. We couldn't do that all on our own. But the partnership between Valley Christian Church and Flores Food Company allows us to really feed not, not just 10 not just 50, 100, but thousands of people. And so I just encourage you right now, set aside these three hours. And it'll be done at noon. We're, we're going to invite you to come, and we're going to pray on July 16th. You could come. I mean, heck, you could come to Saturday morning prayer at 8 o'clock. We're going to have a, time, a special time of prayer for all those that are going to be joining us on Serve Day uh, at the conclusion of Saturday morning prayer. And then you'll be given some instructions, three different groups, three different opportunities that we have. And, and then we're going to go out and we're going to serve our community. Why would you do something like that? Because that's what Jesus wants us to do. When, when he saw, when he overlooked the multitude, 5,000 people that were hungry, he, he fed them. He, he didn't just preach, but he fed them. And, and, and he cared for them that way. So he gives us that example. So, so we, we do have some capacity limits in some of these, these three areas of, of serving. So I encourage you to do it quick. Sign up quick. Sign up fast. And uh, we'll make sure that we've got you know, plenty of t-shirts for everybody. July 16th, 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. What I want to do right now is I just want to close in prayer. Thank the Lord for everything he's doing. He's doing so much through the Valley family right now. And I, I just want to ask, would you just bow your heads with me? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you, Lord, that, that, that we have a heart, that, that your family, your, your people here at Valley Christian Church have so long had a heart for our community and show it by showing up and, and, and putting in, Lord, time serving our community those that serve on Sunday, Lord, those that serve outside the, the Sunday morning services, Lord, there's so, many, so much going on. It's just so hard to quantify sometimes. And God, I pray for those maybe that one reason or another, Lord, they're kind of in the grandstands, kind, kind of watching what's going on in the field. God, I pray that you just speak to our hearts, that we'd come down out of the bleachers, we, we'd walk across the sideline, and we'd get in the game. We get in the game serving you, Lord. That, that every one of us would be an active member of the team, helping people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.